America. When working with something as iconic as the eagle, you have to have something that's compositionally interesting. So in order to do this painting today, I've already got a reference photo from a professional photographer, Kelsey Percy, who uh, does amazing work. And she took a photo that was compositionally interesting because the eagle was ripping apart this fish and the, the diagonal lines in the background to the foreground to the wood it was on uh, create a nice S shape to pull your eye through the composition. So you can see that here in a moment. Nice corner to corner action with, with the photograph already. I've compacted it a little and now I'm drawing it, pre-drawing it uh, on top of acrylic, a, a canvas board that's been uh, primed with acrylic paint. I find that oil paint flows very nicely over acrylic and that works well. You cannot really acrylic over oil. Um, it doesn't adhere as well as it should when you go reverse. So a lot of people enjoy painting uh, oil over acrylic though. It works very well. This is just a time lapse of me going through the piece, it's, everything is pre-drawn already. I'm still using the visual reference. A lot of beginning artists make that mistake when they're painting. They get the drawing done and they put the reference photo away and then they just try and paint you know, what they know or remember of it. No, you still need that reference photo in front of you, which is off camera for me right now, but I'm still looking at that, matching colors, matching shades, and working my way through this process. Now I primed it with a warm red uh, as a background because uh, the red shows through nicely. When you leave a canvas white, a lot of times you get these little like you know unfinished looks that that show through where the red you can actually allow there to be some some space, some some things that are that go unpainted and allow for a red kind of silhouette effect or a, a halo effect around your object or, or it can just show through the paint and and end up having a warmer approach to it. That's a technique I learned from Timothy Haslett, a local would-be artist here who's fantastic. Um, and something that I just, I've enjoyed, you know. It's just very enjoyable to paint on a warm color background. So, um, but credit to cre where credit is due. Um, impressionist painters well before me have been uh, doing underpainting like that. Some people map out, you know, different colors for underneath each piece depending on the warm or cool composition of it. Um, I've done that with pieces as well. That, that can work pretty good. Here's a, a second layer of detail going back through. Now, once I had everything kind of texturally filled in, I'm going to go back through and really take a fine brush and detail some of the little things that will make all the difference for having a, having a believable um, end product. Not that photorealism is always the, that's not always the goal, but in this particular case, the texture of the wood, the texture of the feathers, those are all focal points for making this a good piece. So, yeah. Um, working with feathers is difficult, but it's a great experience for those of you who try it. Here's the final product. Remember that painting is all about layers. Get out there and continue to create layers on your painting, and you'll have a good time. Thanks.